Prince of Peace. children who sit in marketplaces and call to one another. We played the flute for you, but you did not dance. We sang a dirge, but you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they said, He is possessed by a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they said, Look, he is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is vindicated by her works. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today, Jesus is reminding us about how we so easily judge by appearances and, and hardly ever get it right, and especially when it's uh, through glasses of judgmental ways of seeing, like the way these people were, that they were never happy. One uh, wasn't eating or drinking, John the Baptist, he says, and they thought he was, he was uh, mad, obsessed by a demon. And then Jesus, who did, thought that they, he was a, like a drunkard and, and living a simple life. And either, uh, either one, of course, was not true, and yet it's the way that people come to judge appearances that bring people to say things like this. And that's something that we have to think about during this time of Advent, because not just in the aspects of like things like Jesus did and so on, that he was a regular person, but just the fact that his appearances also have, makes a big difference in how we see him and how we believe in him and how much we love him and have faith in him. So we have to remember that in Advent, we think about the coming of our Lord. But really, we have to remember that there are three comings. It is the coming of the first one, which was in history uh, over 2,000 years ago in Bethlehem, which is what we're celebrating in Christmas. But it's a coming that has happened in history already. And then, of course, it'll be, we have uh, the second coming when he comes in all his glory to make a new heaven and a new earth, and just like we see in, uh, in the, the book of Revelation, and so on. But then, we have to remember that he also comes each and every day to be amongst us, especially in the sacrament of the Eucharist as he also does in the poorest of the poor, living in his word, and so on. But, uh, in, in, in especially in the most direct way, in the Eucharist, uh, he comes to us. And what we want to do, of course, is that we always want to have this joyful and hopeful anticipation that we have in Advent to welcome him each day to be born in our hearts when we receive him in the Eucharist, when we are present at, at Mass and, and he comes to us. So, but that is something that we have to think about because uh, it is very like Jesus to come, to come always in appearances that are un, in a way unexpected. So, for example, when he first, he first came uh, over 2,000 years ago, uh, the, most of the people were waiting this power for this powerful Messiah that he was going to be this extremely the most uh, richest and powerful uh, ruler in the world, much more so than uh, than the Caesar, and much more so than the Roman Empire. And that was going to be the Messiah for them. He was going to have all the money in the world, all the armies in the world, 
and just conquer everything for the Jewish people for always. But of course, that's not the, the kingdom that Jesus came to bring, not an earthly kingdom. So of course, when he comes uh, as a little baby in a manger, uh, that, surrounded by animals and then living the life that he led in, in all his humility and, and everything, of course, most people, because of his appearance, uh, would not realize that he was the Messiah because that's not what they were expecting. That's not what they wanted. And so then, but now we have to realize that it's not so different that he comes to us in a piece of bread. Because if we think about it, if he were to come to us each day in Mass and we would like have a glimpse of him, uh, like in all his glory and, and loving us and everything, uh, like the way we will, will one day see him hopefully in heaven, and or the way that he, every so often like a mystic like Saint Faustina has an opportunity to see, uh, it would be a lot easier to have faith in him and to love him and to believe in him. But since he comes disguised uh, in a, in a piece of bread, he want he he's having us love him not because it's almost like forced upon us because <laughs> seeing him in all his glory would almost like there's we would almost have no choice our soul would have no choice but to love it. Instead, he comes to us uh, through, in this way in which is a very much uh, a way in which we're invited to love him and have faith in him despite his appearances. Where how more humble can it be that the God of the universe comes in this little piece of plain bread? And so that's something that we have to think about because that's a coming of Jesus Christ that is so important that we're going to live in a few minutes. And, and, and it, it makes uh, such a difference. I recently read a book, uh, it's a movie that's out called Wonder. Uh, it's, it's for like, it's a, for like maybe like 12 year olds, but it's actually for like, you know, it's great. And so my niece and nephew uh, had a first communion and they wanted me to, uh, to go see it. Uh, I went, when I went to Nicaragua, they wanted me to talk about it. And, 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 and so, I didn't have a chance to see the movie, but I just like downloaded the book on, and I read it like on the plane. And so it is very inspiring. And it's about a kid that was born with, uh, with some condition, like a genetic condition in which his whole face had like severe deformations. So he was almost like a burnt victim, uh, but then everything was like out of place, like the years, the eyes, everything. And it's a, based on a true story, and it happens, you know, very rarely, but it does happen. And and so uh, this kid, the main character, he he had suffered so much, not only physically, you know, he had twenty seven operations by the time he was ten, and so on. But the worst part was, you know, wherever he would go, people would stare, people would be cruel, and so on. And so in the book slash movie, you see how. And there's all these sets of people, those that have always loved him very much, like his family. And you see people that at first were kind of reserved, or you know, they, 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 were, they were just like, couldn't get back past his appearance, but eventually got to know him, and, and they became uh, great friends with him. And then those people that never, that always rejected him because of the way he looked, especially like other school uh, friends and so on. But then you see how the people that got to know him and love him become his friends were filled with so many blessings because he was such a great kid. And yet the ones that always rejected him, of course, uh, missed out. And, and, and that reminded me that's almost like the choice that Jesus is giving us, but so much more. It is this choice whether to come to love him in his appearance or, or not. And so let us pray this Advent that he helps us to always uh, have a greater faith in his presence in the Eucharist and in the way that we are excited and hopeful for Christmas that each day that we're about to receive him may we may have Advent and Christmas in our hearts. God bless you. And now let us ask our Heavenly Father to help us with all of our needs. Let us pray for our church that 
it may during this time of Advent, we may all be filled with hopeful expectation in our hearts to pray for the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And what else should we pray for? <coughs> we pray for our holy Father, Pope Francis, for Cardinal Dolan, for all the bishops and priests in the church. Pray especially for Director Father Enrique. We pray for all his needs and intentions for his parishioners. <clears throat> we remember all the priests who are in special need. We pray, continue to pray for Father Tom. We pray for Father Stephen and Father Andre. And for all the graces that all the priests need during this time of Advent to bring many souls to you and may they receive much consolation from your love. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, 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 Lord. Lord Jesus, we beg you to open the hearts of all the families and the children who will be coming tomorrow that they may know and experience how much <coughs> You love them, that they may come to understand deeper the Christmas and Advent time. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Dear Jesus, we thank you for the outpouring of your precious blood all over those of the media and entertainment and the political world, that they will use their powerful influence to bring souls to your sacred heart rather than cause confusion and turn them away. We ask this through the intercession of Mother Mary. For each of them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died. In a special way, we remember Father Aaron and Lord Timothy. <coughs> we pray for the happy repose of his soul. And we pray for all the fires that are renewal during this time. For this, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. This is not a community issue, but the only way that you can tell the winter from the summer is by the leaves on the trees, and you will not be able to tell that if there wasn't no breeze. Thanks for hearing my prayer. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for all the volunteers, co-workers, and patrons in our place. How hard does to <coughs> set the food at the available in any time? With thanksgiving for their generosity, especially we pray for Nick and Tom and for all the intentions for their family and those who are present here. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. <coughs> for Rose Brenna and her brother Murray who passed away the other day, for the consolation of the family, we pray for them both. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, we pray for Eileen and all those who are sick and the families who are suffering. Um, Lord, please bless the uh, sanctity of families and um, bless those who teach our children that they be guided by the Holy Spirit. For this, Lord, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Also, we pray for all the families who are at this moment divided, for the pastor and the protection of being deported, and the mothers who are struggling with the children by themselves, especially for Daniel, we pray he will be okay. For them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love, and we ask you that you always help us to give us hearts that are filled with expectation for the coming of Jesus in the different ways that he comes to us. We ask you that you help us with this and with all of our needs, which we present to you each day in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.